in a sense, there's a danger that corporate citizenship has co-opted much of the sustainable development uh, agenda. And that what was happening is that companies are actually institutionalizing their thought processes, their responses, uh, rather more peripherally uh, than they ought to be doing. And you get almost these snowballs, uh, these, uh, these sort of uh, snowball-like agendas, which entrain just one damn issue after another. And the problem is, buried in those snowballs are some really key strategic issues uh, for companies. And the problem is that very often those aren't getting through to the board in the way that they uh, need to do. The question that we've been asked to address in this um, session is, um, are corporations equipped for the 21st century to set the stage for the later discussions? Henry Minsberg uh, will start. Um, Many of you will know him for his book, The Rise and Fall of Strategic Planning, but he's, he's written much else. He's uh, a, a considerable critic uh, of the way in which business schools, like uh, Harvard Business School or Wharton or others, have gone about what they do. Uh, no great enthusiast, I think, for uh, MBA-style uh, education. Our second speaker first really uh, impacted me uh, when his book, um, when Corporations Rule the World came out, I think, in 1995. So a very early uh, voice of the anti-globalization movement, or at least anti-globalization in the format which corporations have uh, chosen to, to some degree, impose uh, upon us. And um, you'll all know David's distinction between the sort of the cowboy and the spaceship uh, economy. And then third, we'll take Ari de Goes, who, who uh, sorry, Hus. Um, who uh, you will know um, partly because of his, like Charles, he was for many years at uh, Shell. He led the uh, scenarios uh, group there uh, for many years when they were le leading the field uh, in that area. And like uh, other two panelists, has also done a, a quite extraordinary book, uh, The Living uh, Company. Let me start by saying I'm all in favor of the socially responsible corporation, and I mean that quite seriously. Without, without responsible people in high places, uh, our society is worth nothing. Um, but I want to go well beyond that. I'm also in favor of the alignment of deck chairs on cruise ships. Um, and the question we're facing, I think, is whether we're sailing on the Titanic. Um, and I think we're sailing on the Titanic. Um, in other words, I think that... Um, that the answer to the, to the grave problems that I think face society today go well beyond what corporations will be able to do. Let me talk about cause. The, the, the obvious cause that people would point to uh, is the corruption that we see every day in the newspapers. Um, I don't think that's the problem today. Uh, I think that's the tip of the iceberg, and it's the tip of the iceberg that's above the surface in the sense that once that corruption comes out, we can deal with it in courts of law. Far more serious is what I call the legal corruption, uh, which involves all kinds of practices and behaviors that are unacceptable, even though they're legal. Uh, uh, the, the most uh, corporate compensation that uh, Charles has already mentioned is one obvious thing. Um, but the, uh, but the, uh, I think downsizing the casual way in which people are fired in companies or, or dispensed with in companies. It's not coincidental that the use of the term human resource came about at the same time as a lot of this downsizing. If people are human resources, they can be dispensed with. If people are human beings, uh, they can't be dispensed with. I'm not a human resource. I'm a human being. But I don't think the heart of the problem is in the legal corruption any more than I think it's in the illegal corruption. I think the heart of the problem is in the imbalance in society, the imbalance um, between the corporate or, or business sector and other, and other sectors. It's the trumping of the social and the political consistently by the economic that I think is the heart of the problem. We have an economic stranglehold that is a, an economic dogma at least that has a stranglehold on society and I think that's a huge huge part of the problem and the power of the corporations is the most obvious manifestation of that. We have a kind of coalition of, if you like, of economic dogma with financial greed and it's uh, causing huge problems. 
So I think we need to change the question. It's not our corporations equipped for the 20th century, 21st century, but is the 21st century equipped for mankind? Let me repeat, I'm in favor of socially responsible corporations. I admire them. I think it's critically important in their place. And what we're having today is the corporate sector out of its place. If you want to be responsible, get out of my government. Get out of my social life. And, and stay where you do the best good possible, which is on the economic side and on consumption. Um, and that's what we, uh, what we desperately need, it seems to me, is to, uh, is to balance that. Corporations as persons is an aberration. If corporations really want to be persons in the eyes of the law, then let them be persons in the whole respect. If a corporation breaks the law, let it go to jail for several years. In other words, let it stop functioning in society for several years. No corporation will accept that, so no corporation should accept being a person in the eyes of the law, having it one way and not the other way.